Welcome back, America, to Sound Retirement Radio, where we bring you concepts, ideas, and strategies designed to help you achieve clarity, confidence, and freedom as you prepare for and transition through retirement. And now, here is your host, Jason Parker. America, welcome back to another round of Sound Retirement Radio. I'm so glad to have you tuning into this episode. You're listening to number 387, Achieve Your Goals with our guest, Carly Tizano. Before we get started, I always like to get the day started right by renewing our mind, and I've got a verse here for us from Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then something fun to put a smile on your face since we're talking about goals. I achieved my goal of personal growth. I verified it this morning by standing on the scale. (laughs) How would your life look if you achieved one important goal this year? Today's show is about setting and achieving goals. Goals are direction. Goals are focus. Where we focus is where our life goes. Even if you don't achieve the goals, it's good to be moving in the right direction. In today's show, I invited Carly Tizano to be our guest. Carly is the host of the Resolve podcast, and she has a coaching business to help people achieve their goals. I do have a few quick announcements before we get into today's show. First of all, I wanted to let you know that Retirement Budget Calculator was selected as best in show for FinCon this year. And so this means that um, I'm going to be given the opportunity to speak from stage where there's more than 1,500 people, YouTubers, bloggers, podcasters, uh, social media influencers, and I get to tell them about how the Retirement Budget Calculator is transforming retirement in America. There were only six fintechs selected, and um, I'm really hoping that we're going to win the contest of the six that were selected, so that's exciting. We just released an update for the Retirement Budget Calculator. One of the new features is called Goals, and this is a feature for our premium subscribers to be able to track their progress on their goals. I think you're going to love it. We also released a new feature in the Retirement Calculator to better and more accurately handle Social Security when one spouse dies. If you want to see a video about how these new features work, just visit soundretirementplanning.com, click on episode number 387, and I'll have a video there that you can watch to see everything in action. One last thing, I did finalize my new book. It's been sent out for publishing and printing. I'll be sending an email out to our fans and subscribers when the book is available for purchase. If you're a money nerd getting ready for retirement, you are going to love the new book. I'm excited to share it with you. Remember, articles, links, and resources for anything mentioned in today's show can be found at soundretirementplanning.com. Just click on episode number 387. Without any further ado, let's jump into my interview with Carly Tizano about achieving goals. All right, it's my good fortune to have Carly Tizano on the program with me today. Carly has a business and a podcast all about goals. Carly, welcome to Sound Retirement Radio. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It is so good. Um, It's nice to have you back in. We've We've had you on the show in the past. Mm -hmm. But I'm really excited right now because we have this new feature in the Retirement Budget Calculator that we just launched called Goals. It's all about setting goals. This is what you do. You help Mm -hmm. people achieve their goals. So I want to learn as much as I can about goal setting. But first, I'm curious to know why you decided to create the Resolve podcast and why you're passionate about helping people achieve goals. Well, great question. I have always been a big podcast listener, which grew out of being a big audiobook listener. Oh. Um, when I got back into reading for fun, once I finally graduated college and didn't have to read school stuff anymore, um, I found myself always listening to audiobooks. And then pretty soon that evolved into listening to podcasts because some of my favorite authors had podcasts and they were sharing more of their great content that way. And pretty soon I realized, well, that's something I could do. Yeah. Um, and so it just kind of naturally evolved as my business grew. And I had all of these ideas I wanted to share, amazing people I'd met that I wanted to interview and have them share with the people I knew who were listening to me. Um, so the podcast just kind of naturally grew out of that. And this avenue of my business, helping people establish their goals and determine what they want to do and figure out how to reach them really grew out of... Uh, my professional home organizing business, which is what I was on the podcast to talk about last time. And as I was helping people get rid of all of the junk in their house that they didn't want anymore and establish streamlined systems, I found that some of them still weren't making progress on the things that they really wanted to. They thought that once they got through all of this clutter in their lives, they would have the time and the space and the opportunity to really go after those lifelong dreams that they had had um, or just that different way they wanted to spend their Saturday morning instead of cleaning out the garage. 
And many of them, even though they got through all that stuff, they still weren't quite making that switch. They still weren't quite going after those things. And so I started to figure out and find ways that I could help them because I wanted them to take that next step to really go after those things that mattered to them, to Mm -hmm. spend their time doing Mm -hmm. the things they wanted to. Um, And so my coaching business and helping people reach their goals really grew out of that desire. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I've been listening to your podcast, specifically listening to the ones that are about goals. And one of the things I noticed early in the year when you were setting goals, you had a bunch. You had like, I I think your goal was at 22 goals for Mm -hmm. 2022. Yes. So I'm curious to know three quarters, almost three quarters of the way through the year now, what, uh, what are the goals that have been your favorite so far for you personally? And what have been the most challenging goals for you to keep with? Mm, Okay, great question. Well, I had a lot of small fun ones um, to kind of balance out some of the ones that I felt were bigger. So some of the harder ones have been uh, getting my book published. So that's something I'm still working on. It'll happen before the end of the year. Um, And I'm also in graduate school this year. So those are ones that have taken a lot of time and effort and energy. And the ones I've enjoyed more that have been a little bit more fun are the ones that I kind of set to balance those out. So going on a few trips, um, going to a National Hockey League game was a lot of fun. Mm. Um, We went on a dog sled ride up in Alaska earlier this year. So those kinds of things were a lot of fun. So that brought that element into my life, uh, (laughs) something that I wanted to do, especially to balance out those things that are a bit more ambitious and a bit more difficult, but that are still in line with the life that I want to live and the kind of person I want to become. So I think a lot of times we can focus on too too heavily on one or the other, mm. um, where we think that goals are these big difficult things that we have to go after, um, or we just set goals like I want to go see the Nutcracker in mm. December. Mm. Um, but I think that it's really important to have a blend of both of those things because we want to have go after challenging things, but we also want to have fun, and we can set goals around both of those things. And finding that balance and making sure that our life has whatever the correct balance is for us is really important as mm-hmm. we as we set goals and then shape our lives around those things that we want. Yeah, I I think I heard you describe it as achievement goals and habit goals. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. these, you know, things you want to be moving towards in terms of new habits you want to develop, but then also achievement goals, things you want to accomplish. And so I like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's kind of those goals that we set that are going to be lifelong, right? Mm. Like establishing some kind of running habit or eating healthy. You're never going to be able to check those off, Mm. but there are the goals that we can achieve and accomplish and that we can check off, but that may take some amount of action to get to, or maybe not. That's okay too. (laughs) One of the ones, one of the goals, now one of the reasons I thought this was interesting, one of the reasons I built this into the retirement budget calculator is because we want people to have a great life. We want them, we want their finances to be awesome, but Mm -hmm. we want them to be moving in the right direction. And I think for me, one of the things goals does is it gives me focus on direction. It helps me know if I'm moving the right way. And and that's one of the reasons I like goals. But I, I was talking to a guy one time who's retired and he's he told me he set daily goals mm. and I thought wow cuz up until that point my goals were always these are the things that I wanted to accomplish over the course of a year so when I heard somebody tell me that they wanted to achieve daily goals I've incorporated that into my routine now what do you think about this idea of having something that you're intentional about doing every single day I think that's important too and it's what in the grander scheme over the course of a year is what can help us move towards those big things because I certainly couldn't publish a book or Mm -hmm. go to graduate school without looking at it on a daily level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another one of those dichotomies where either sometimes we can be kind of too big picture focused or Mm. too granularly focused sometimes and lose sight of that bigger picture of what we're going after and why we're going after it. But I think that both components are so important. Yes. And that's where you can see the progress you're making, making and the momentum you're building is in the day to day Uh, progress and the things you're checking off but having that vision of this is where I'm heading or this is what I want my retirement to look like I think is really important too yes yes so your dad and I are close friends Mm -hmm. and I remember when he was writing his his book he he asked me how I wrote my book and I told him Richard the only time I had available to write was four o'clock in the morning on Tuesdays and Thursdays Mm -hmm. so I would say okay these are the times I'm going to set aside an hour twice a week and I'm just going to write whatever I think about. And that's how I was able to write my first book. And I've got a new book coming out soon. Writing writing has gotten easier as my team has grown mm. because now I've, I've realized that everything isn't dependent on me. And mm-hmm. the more people that I can bring into my life, 
to help me achieve the goals, it's almost like um, things speed up, things get faster. We get more accomplished the more quality people you bring into your life. So I'm excited about that. But tell me about daily habits or daily routines or daily goals, things that you're trying to accomplish on a daily basis as you think about daily, daily goals. Yeah, well, so for me, going to grad school, a lot of times it's daily homework. What does that look like? I haven't set a lot of goals around health or fitness and wellness recently. I have Mm. in the past, but those are things that I have said in the past. And so they've become really enmeshed in my present. Mm. So going to the gym every day isn't something that I debate with myself about. There's no Mm. argument of, is it going to happen? Well, maybe today doesn't count. Maybe today doesn't matter Mm. because I have been able to make that a part of my life. Eating Mm -hmm. healthy, that one (laughs) maybe could use a little bit more work in the future, but I know that I get fruits and vegetables. I know that I drink a lot of water because those are habits that I focused on Uh in the past. Mm -hmm. And so just figuring out where you're at with that. Is that something that maybe needs a little bit more attention at this point in your life? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But being able to tap into those things, assess where you're at, and then determine if that's in alignment with where you ultimately want to be in that area Mm -hmm. is one way to, to judge whether that's something that needs focus either now or maybe in the near future as you set goals that are either on a year scale or just day to day. One of the things I was thinking about when you talk about fitness, the idea of setting a go to the gym goal can be one of those things everybody gets all fired up for in January. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of January, that has kind of fizzled away. Whereas if, if you set something that's fun, as an act, you know, an activity that you enjoy that also encourages fitness. Like Mm -hmm. for me, I love hiking. Um, This newfound joy of pickleball that I've recently (laughs) discovered. I I mean, it's not hard for me to want to go play pickleball, but I find I'm running, I'm sweating, Mm -hmm. I'm hurting myself. It's like, it's, uh, it's wonderful. What are your thoughts about that idea of something that's difficult versus easy when you're setting goals. Like I, it's not hard for me to say I'm going to set a goal to go play pickleball once a week with my friends because it's so much fun. Whereas if I set a goal of going to the gym, oh man, I, I just, for me, I, I, I just, that that's a challenge. You know, it's like, an, it's trying to push something uphill. Yeah. What are your thoughts about over balancing those two things? Right. I think difficult and easy both play a role, right? Mm. And I like to think that we have a certain amount of effort that we can expand. Sometimes our capacity for that varies based on whether we have young kids, maybe we've just entered retirement. And so we have a little bit more effort that we can expand towards those things that we want to. So there may be seasons when a lot of that effort is something you want to put into going to the gym. Mm. And there may be seasons when that's just not feasible. And so in order to get the exercise that you know you want to, you want to really tap into that fun. And maybe most of that effort is going into the coordination of Mm. who is available to come to play pickleball this weekend and how can we make this work with the most people's schedules. So sometimes the effort kind of presents itself in different ways, but it doesn't always have to be like pushing a boulder up the hill. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we want to figure out how can we make this more fun Mm -hmm. because why wouldn't we want to do that? Right. And it's just when you get to that point of, okay, I am going maybe playing pickleball a couple times a week now. Is that how much exercise I want to get? Is that meeting that quota for me? Maybe I want to add in hiking. Maybe Mm -hmm. that's going to kind Mm -hmm. of round this out. Um, or maybe I know my dad has gotten really into water aerobics. He was really loving that mm. this year now that he's retired. But then he decided, well, maybe I want to add in a bit some some weightlifting, some mm. kind of resistance exercise that isn't just water based. So he started to add a little bit of that in. And I know mm. he's been enjoying that. And it's different because when he's in the water, there's that social aspect. You're in the class. There's mm-hmm. music playing. Um, but when he's getting to do kind of weightlifting resistance exercises, he can listen to a podcast or an audiobook. Mm. So he's kind of making that fun in different ways. Mm. Um, so it doesn't have to be hard or easy or difficult or fun. It doesn't always have to be such a tight dichotomy, Mm -hmm. but if it is something that you're struggling with, then that probably is maybe when you're going to want to lean into the fun. How can you Mm -hmm. bring that more into the discussion to at least get that ball rolling? And then maybe there's some more experimentation, um, that you want to have with it. Uh, and if not, then maybe it is just the time when you have to kind of grit it out a little bit, push the boulder up the hill for a while to mm-hmm. really get into that rhythm until it maybe becomes easier or you're more able to experiment with how to make it more fun. I'll tell you an area for me where it's gotten something that I didn't love initially, but now I see the benefit in it. And this year, one of my goals was to eat a banana for breakfast mm. and a salad for lunch. Ooh. Yeah. And I am initially I was I, I felt like I was being deprived of the things that I mm. really wanted. You know, I wanted to have biscuits and gravy for <laughs> breakfast, but I decided to have. So what has happened now is I've really and maybe it's also because I'm getting older, but I've really discovered that food is fuel. Mm-hmm. 
So if I have that banana for breakfast, I'm usually hungry by the time I get to lunch. And then if I have a salad for lunch, my my focus, my energy is all still really strong after lunch. I can still get mm. so much done. If I make the mistake of going and getting a taco at lunch, oh man, all of a sudden mm. I just crash after lunch. And my brain, I have a hard time focusing. And so for me, it's really... I look forward to the salad now because I know, or the banana for breakfast, because I know that I'm going to be able to stay focused throughout mm-hmm. the day instead of all of a sudden just crashing. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's something that started out difficult, but now I look forward to it. If I could just get that discipline when I get home, <laughs> then you know, the the chips and the cookies and all the fun stuff that's available as soon as I get home, I like all my discipline falls away. (laughs) Yeah, I think sometimes that's true. I've noticed that a lot with my clients, especially if they are really working on like a morning routine um, or going to the gym earlier in the day before they get home. A lot of times by the evening, they have kind of worn through that amount of effort that they had to expend for the day. And so sometimes it can feel like they're just kind of sliding into the evening and all of those good habits are going out the window. And so sometimes that's when we've turned the focus into, okay, now how are we going to shape the evening into being what you want it to be? And sometimes it has been them coming to the realization of, well, I do still want to have chocolate in the evening. I don't Mm -hmm. want to get rid of that. And Mm -hmm. I really enjoy watching a couple hours of television when I get home Mm. um, or playing games with my family or whatever it may be. And so they realize I just don't need to feel bad about that aspect of my evening. I want to embrace it and enjoy it and not have that level of guilt associated with it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so sometimes it's changing it and sometimes it's not. But either way, just kind of taking ownership of that realization of this is or isn't what I want. And I'm going to make sure that if it is, I'm going to enjoy it. And if it isn't, I'm going to turn it into what I can really enjoy and embrace. One of the things that's I've started, uh, it's been about a year now, but I hired a personal coach, Mm -hmm. somebody that I meet with twice a month. And I found it to be a really valuable time to have somebody looking at my life from the outside in. Yeah. This is what you're doing, your coaching. Tell me, what do you enjoy about that experience of getting to walk life with people and help them achieve things that are important to them? I've said before, it's it's one of the honors of my life, I think, to be able to do that, to have people open up their life to me, to be vulnerable in that way. And it's so exciting to partner with people because I don't think you look for a coach until you're really ready to take your life to that next level. Mm. You are really wanting to to grow and to mature, to up-level some part of your life. And so it's really fun to meet people where they're at in that because a lot of times they want that, but they just don't know how to do it. And so it's exciting to be able to provide them tools and tips and that outside perspective of maybe here's where you're going wrong or this is what you're struggling with. Maybe we can look at it from this angle or maybe we can try this tool. Um, or I noticed there's this this kind of skip in your mindset here. Maybe if we work on this belief about yourself or what you want, that then we'll really be able to move to that next level. And it's just so exciting to to be inspired by the growth that I see in my mm-hmm, clients mm-hmm. Um, and then to be able to take that excitement into my next client session and to share that with them and to motivate and inspire them as well. It's really just a ripple effect too mm-hmm, because I mm-hmm. see that my clients then they're sharing what they're learning with their friends and their friends are setting new goals and going after new things and making big life changes. And so it's so fun to just witness that in other people's lives. And I think that's the power of setting goals, of having that intentional direction of going after it with great effort. And then just all of the change that naturally flows from that. And then all the people we get to bring along with us along the way. Yeah. Brand new feature that Mm -hmm. we just released in the Retirement Budget Calculator. I gave you a little sneak peek at at it today. Everybody hasn't seen this yet. It's brand new. But um, on the daily goals, it looks like a calendar where you can go in and when you accomplish what it is you said you were going to do on that day, you can hit uh, the button and it turns a different color. So you, you have a visual representation of how are you doing in terms of moving in the right direction. We have it organized by daily, weekly, monthly, annual, and lifetime. I think of the lifetime as those big bucket list items. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, if we could only do this, that would really make life amazing. And when I've been listening to some of your podcasts, and again, tell tell us the name of the show again. The Resolve Podcast. The Resolve Podcast with Carly Tizano. Yeah, it's really good. You've got some great guests on there. Like I said, I've been listening to your goal setting specifically. And one of your goals was to see the Northern Lights. And you talked about, you made this trip to Alaska Mm -hmm. and then... Tell us, tell us what happened. Yeah. So my dad and I got to go to Alaska earlier this year and there were a couple things of those lifetime goals that I have on my bucket list that I was hopeful we would be able to do. So going on the dog sled was one of them. We also got to go to a natural hot springs mm. um, and it was snowing. It was really cool. And then the third thing I was really hoping to do while we were there was to see the Northern Lights. 
and it was kind of the prime time of year to be able to do that. So we stayed up a couple nights. We peeked out the window a couple nights, set alarms for the middle of the night. And then there was one opportunity we had to like go on a Northern Lights watching expedition up the mountain, but it didn't look that hopeful for that night. So mm. we ended up deciding it's probably not worth it. And then even as we took off like into the night sky to fly home, we were hopeful that we'll be up above the clouds that had been plaguing us the whole trip. Mm. Maybe we'll get to see something. And unfortunately, we didn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, The weather didn't quite cooperate with us in that way. And so I came home and was, of course, disappointed. Didn't happen quite the way I was hoping it would. Um, So how do you deal with that disappointment? It's like this is a bucket. This is a big deal for you. Mm -hmm. You you made the effort, you went to the place, and then you have no control over whether that something like that's going to happen. Right. So I got home, I set um, a little Google alert. So I get emails all the time whenever there's a headline about the Northern Lights in Washington. And sometimes oh. it has nothing to do with the Northern Lights in Washington. But a lot of times it does. Like supposedly we were going to be able to see the Northern Lights last night. Mm-hmm. I was up kind of late. So I did look outside, didn't see anything. And so I was like, I'm going to be open to that goal presenting itself in my life somehow, some way. Mm. Um, but that was one of the goals that I set this year for fun, to balance out all of mm. the other things. I wanted to to check it off by a bucket list, but really to have fun. And so when it didn't happen quite the way I wanted it to, I decided instead of stressing about this, mm-hmm. this fun goal, this thing that I want, especially because this is a lifetime goal that is kind of out of my control, if it was something like go on a trip to the Amalfi Coast, that would be something really cool to do. I, I can like book tickets, make that happen, there's not really any ifs, ands, or buts about that, then that's something that I would be kind of pressuring myself a little bit harder to figure out. Since this is one, though, that is mostly outside of my control, I decided I'm going to stand behind the intention of this goal, Mm -hmm. which is to have Mm -hmm. fun, to check something off my bucket list. I'm going to sub it out with something else while still kind of remaining open to see how slash if this goal decides to present itself this year. Um, So I ended up going to the National Hockey League game instead, checking that off my list. And that was a lot of fun. And it stood behind that intention of doing something fun um, and not putting pressure on this fun goal and turning it into something stressful. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to live out the rest of this year having technically checked off that number on my list and remaining open to seeing the Northern Lights now or if not this year, then at some point in the future, hopefully. Um, but without having to attach that that stress stress or pressure to the goal that I was really just wanting to have for fun. Sometimes I found that we can get into our own way of seeing things. And when mm-hmm. you have an outside perspective come in, they can help you see things differently. And I'll never forget, it was probably about 15 years ago, I, was, I met with a couple. At the time, they were in their late 60s. And they had this dream. They had always wanted to do a 30-day cruise. Mm. and But they didn't think that financially they could afford it. And they didn't have a financial plan that they were working from. And one of the things I love about the work that we do is that a plan creates so much clarity, especially when it comes to finance and numbers, Mm -hmm. because it's measurable and it's easy to identify. So we created that plan for them. And I was able to say, look, you guys can do this 30 day cruise. And I'll never forget how excited Mm -hmm. I was when they got back from the 30 day cruise. And they said, Jason, uh, thank you for giving us permission to to go do this. And now they're in their 80s and they still talk about that memory. And I love meeting with them. They're just wonderful people. But uh, yeah, so being able to marry some, in some instances, you have to have the financial goals to be able to say, yeah. you know, is this achievable? Can we actually do it? And, and it's exciting when people can see both of those things coming together. Yeah, I think especially at that lifetime range, a lot of times those if they were things we could just go down the street and spend five dollars for, then we would just do them. But a lot of times I think you're right. It is. Those are the ones that require a bigger financial commitment, probably a bigger time commitment. Um, And sometimes it's fun having them out in the future, knowing that maybe someday we'll get to go on that 30 day cruise. But it does take intentional planning and saving probably in order for those to happen. And so it's so cool that you have the opportunity to come alongside people that way and not only to show them that their dreams are possible, but for some people to help them figure out what they need to do now to make them possible in the future. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you about losing momentum on Mm -hmm. important goals Mm -hmm. because there are things that we we set out, we say we're going to do, and then for whatever the reason, uh, we, we fall off the wagon and we don't, and we lose momentum towards those things. What are your thoughts about and here's here's the way that I've framed it sometimes, Carly, I, is I'll think to myself, boy, I, I accomplished all these things this year, but I will focus on the two or three mm-hmm. things that I didn't accomplish. And then I'll feel like a failure at the end of the year, even though 
80% of what I set out to achieve, I accomplished. So talk to us about this other side of goal setting where you can al- it can almost make you feel like you're a failure if there were one or two things that you didn't accomplish as you've set out to create direction and focus. Yeah, absolutely. It can be hard, especially when you're setting them in the year long range, especially kind of resolutions, because you know when you're supposed to check in December 31st, if it rolls around and that thing you said you wanted isn't done, it's, it's pretty clear that it wasn't done. Um, and so one of the key things that I work with my clients on is celebrating their goals, mm-hmm. celebrating that 80% that they did do. And sometimes it's the 99% that they did do and not beating themselves up about the 1% that maybe didn't get 100% complete or that they didn't quite check off. And I think when we can celebrate the success and give that the appropriate focus and weight that it deserves, mm-hmm. it sort of lessens um, that disappointment that we feel in what we didn't get done. And a lot of times we don't do that. We don't honor the success or celebrate the things we have done, or at least we don't quite do that enough. We just kind of shrug our shoulders and say, yeah, I, I did that, but I knew it was going to get done. Mm-hmm. And then recognizing it's okay to feel disappointed sometimes about the things that we didn't do that we were hopeful about, but realize that that doesn't have any consequence or meaning about whether or not we can continue to move forward or get it done in the future. Um, I've talked to a lot of clients. I see this a lot when they're writing a book. Sometimes they're like, I want to write a book this year. And so they'll, they'll work on it and they'll get thousands of words on the page and then they'll get to December 31st or whatever their benchmark is and realize, well, the book's not quite done. Or even there's quite a more, few more steps to take after you've written the book yeah. in order to get it out in the world. And so a lot of times they'll feel disappointed at that point. And I think it's important to recognize, like, even if writing a book, if that's your big goal, if that's going to take you two years instead of one, it doesn't mean you're not going to want to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. You just have to recognize, wow, I got all of this done in one year and there's a bit more that I have to do to keep going. Yeah. Cool. Cool story. That guy was telling you about the the couple that did that 30 day cruise. When I met with them recently, they shared, he shared with me that he just published a book. He's in his eighties. Yeah. And it's all about his family history. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, he loves genealogy and research, but he published a book for families and generations to come that they have a, they don't have to go back and do all the research that he's already done. So it was kind of neat, you know, and it's not that he's trying to sell a bunch of copies. He just wanted to make this book available for family members, which I thought was cool. Because you get to work in a coaching capacity with people, tell me about accountability. Why Mm -hmm. is that important in goal setting? How do you see that impacting people's lives? Accountability is so important and it works better for some people than others. I'll kind of give that caveat, but I certainly think there are some people who who need that that level of externalization of their goals, whether it be through a coach or through a book club or the other people in the aerobics class, having those other people who have expectations for you and who are sharing your desire, I think is so important. Um, And so coaching is just one avenue and aspect of that. But I think it's so important, first of all, because it is an externalization of goals, to be able to express to someone else the things that you want, that really is the first step to making anything real, is to express it outside of yourself. Because a lot of times if we have a desire and we just kind of keep it hidden, we aren't able to to publicly express it or to show our progress, to have other people join us in that. And so that's the other aspect of what Mm -hmm. coaching is able to do, is to be able to join someone in what they want and the progress that they're making so that they can share their struggles, they can share their wins. And then when they do come across some hurdle or obstacle that popped up in their way, to be able to have advice and (laughs) outside tips from someone who's probably struggled with something similar Mm. um, or at least an external perspective of okay I can see where you're at I can see maybe where that struggle is what if we try this and okay that didn't work maybe we'll try this I'm not certainly an expert in every goal I haven't set every goal I've never run a marathon um, but that doesn't mean my clients can't or haven't and sometimes it is okay well I really don't know what kind of running shoes you need for that but there are plenty of experts out there who do so let's find someone who maybe has wisdom on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so as a coach, I like to think of myself as like a library of resources. I, I read tons of books, listen to, t- to tons of podcasts. So I have all of those resources for my clients, but I'm certainly not an exhaustive resource, but I do know people who are runners. So mm-hmm. they're in my library. And so when we need to turn to someone who has run lots of marathons, I know exactly who to turn to, to give my clients what they need, even in that area. I ran a marathon. Oh. It, it, it was an annual goal. It was after the September 11th terrorist attacks mm. as when I started training. I felt like I was Forrest Gump out there, you know, just uh, <laughs> and one of the things that I did, which I'm grateful for, I because I, I trained for an entire year. So this was 2002 mm. that I ran the Seattle Marathon. 
But I kept a journal that whole time. And on the front page of the journal, I remember I wrote, running in the pursuit of excellence. Mm. And one of the, my big takeaways when training for that, because I hadn't been running at all up until that point, and running is some, and it's another one of these things I really enjoy. Like, uh, it, I don't run because I have to. I run because I get to. That's what I tell mm. myself. And right now, I've got a couple of injuries, so I haven't been able to run for the last five weeks. And so I'm out walking, but I miss it, and I enjoy it. Mm. it I, like the way that, I like the way that it makes me think and feel. One of the things I recognized is that if my thinking was negative or poor, my jogging was more difficult. Hmm. It almost felt like I was towing a wagon of rocks behind me if I was having a bad day for whatever the reason. And the flip side to that was when I was really in a positive mindset, I just felt like I could run and nobody could Hmm. ever stop me. And so it was a big, big takeaway for me to understand that how I think and what I think about really influences how I can perform. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I'm super intentional about trying to filter what I allow into my mind. Tell me what your thoughts are about this idea of what, not just what we feed our body, but what we feed our mind and the impact that that has on our performance. Absolutely. Um, One of the biggest coaching tools that I use is called the coaching model. And so it talks about how Um, our circumstances, kind of the neutral things in the world out there that happen, they're just what they are. A lot of times we can't really influence the things that are happening out there. And then we have our, our thoughts. That's really the biggest thing we can control. And then our thoughts create our feelings and then our feelings create our actions and our actions create our results. So there are certainly times we can go out there and work to change the circumstances of the world as we all should. But our biggest focus and the biggest impact we can have is on our thoughts and feelings and actions, which are what lead to our results. And so a lot of times my clients, they think that writing the book and running the marathon is all about changing their actions. But you're so right. Most of the time, what the biggest work we have to do is on working on changing our thoughts and then what feelings we're intentionally creating through those thoughts that are going to fuel those actions we need to take, because that is ultimately what then produces the results that we want. Because like you're saying, you can put a five mile run on the schedule and you can even do the five mile run. But the thoughts that are cr- producing the feelings that are going to lead you to take that five mile run can be totally different and can lead to a totally different outcome on mm-hmm. the run one mm-hmm. way or the other. Mm-hmm. And this is so important in society right now. Just on my way driving into work this morning, I see this guy go fly by me driving <laughs> a really nice sports car, right? Mm. I mean, life is not hard for this person. <laughs> and and he's upset with the guy that was in front of me because mm. the guy was driving too slow in the fast lane. So he's He's giving the guy the bird mm. as he's flying. And I'm thinking to myself, man, what is going on in this guy's world that he's so amped up and so cranked up that he's got to be flipping somebody off mm-hmm. as he's driving down the road in the morning? And so it, to me, it just really underscores this idea of of uh, protecting what we have in our mind and in in going into our mind. There's that book by James Allen that was that was based, the, the title of the book was based on a proverb. It says, as a man thinketh. Mm. That's the title of the book, but the proverb is, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm. And so I'm, I'm reminded that this isn't just a mental exercise, it's a heart exercise. It's yeah. combining both of those things together. But Carly, I'm so excited about the work that you're doing. I love that your focus on is on goals. I love that you're so willing to share all of your goals so openly on your <laughs> podcast. I've listened to the the episode with you and Heidi doing your mid-year check-in and talking about, you know, where you're winning and where you're failing and mm-hmm. and how you can get better. So I appreciate that authenticity. Is there anything else that you would want our listeners to know when it comes to goal setting as you think about uh, just living a great life and moving in a focused direction? I think what I find myself reminding my clients of most often is the idea that your past really has no bearing at all on your future. Just because Mm -hmm. you haven't been able to do something in the past or establish that gym habit or run a marathon does not mean that that's not possible for you in your future. Just because you haven't gone on that 30 day cruise doesn't mean you can't in the future. Mm -hmm. And so having that perspective, that thought and that belief that your future is still wide open to you, Mm -hmm. you still can accomplish all of those things that you want to. And it probably just involves setting those daily goals and weekly goals and monthly goals sometimes to work up to that, whether you need to set financial goals or physical goals, health and wellness goals, social goals, just figuring out what uh, at which of those levels you need to set goals in what area to create mm-hmm. the life that you want is is so powerful and is exactly where all of us start as we begin to make progress in this area. And uh, actually, so I've got one more question for you on that. How do people identify 
the things that are most important to them so mm-hmm. that they know how where they should start. Like if they only could set one goal, how, how, how can they identify what's the most important thing for them to focus on? I think a lot of times people know. They mm. know what mm. that kind of nagging area in their in their life is that they just wish if they could change something, it would be that mm. <laughs> kind of mm. like the thorn in their shoe. But on a grander scale, I work with my clients. Whenever we start, we always create the vision of the life that they want. So mm. for me, since I generally work like on resolutions, it's on December 31st next year. Who do you want to be? Where do you want to be? What do you want to have accomplished? Mm-hmm. But you can set it on a daily, weekly, monthly or yearly level or lifetime level. Mm. Where do you want to be? And what is that life that you want to live? And it's when you begin to then compare and contrast that life, that vision that you have for the future with where you are now, that those little like blinking red lights begin to appear of, I really wish I had more friends who I could just call up and go out to dinner with on a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. Or I wish that I could run five miles and then you'll just see those things begin to pop up. I wish I read more. Um, I wish I went to museums on the weekend, those kinds of things that they'll just begin to appear and you'll begin to notice them. And then you can begin to set those goals at whatever level is appropriate. One of my goals for this year, because my wife and I, we celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary, which was very cool. Yes. And um, I wanted to bring my kids to Alaska because Becky and I, we were living in Alaska at the time that I proposed to Mm -hmm. her and we got married at a little log cabin in Alaska. We only had 12 people at our wedding ceremony. And I was so excited, so excited to bring my kids to show them the waterfall where I proposed to their mom (laughs) and the church where we got married. And, you know, my kids are teenagers, 14 and 17. And the, the hard part for me on this goal, we accomplished it. We achieved it. We did it. We went to this place and it was really cool for Becky and I. But my kids didn't care as much about this as I thought mm. they would. You know, I was mm-hmm. I was so excited. And at one point, my son said, Dad, I don't want to hear any more stories about when you... <laughs> I was so disappointed and I was like, man, I, this was a bucket list item mm. for me and, uh, but it wasn't as important to them, at least at this phase of their life. But uh, anyways, well, any thoughts about uh, a setting a goal that involves other people and then the other people, you know, it doesn't have the same impact that you think it's going to have. Right. Well, this is a perfect example of kind of that, that thought level work. So whether it's the guy who's driving 10 miles below the speed limit ahead of you in the fast lane or the other people who aren't just quite responding to your goal or jumping on board the way that you hope they would. It's all based on our thoughts and beliefs Mm, about how mm -hmm. they should be acting. Our expectations, yeah. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, unfortunately, we can't control their actions. And it's okay to be annoyed at the guy in front of you. And it's okay to be disappointed that your kids aren't quite as excited about this or maybe they don't want to come on that 30-day cruise with you. It's okay to be sad about that. And Mm. it's okay maybe to do a little like elbow in the side like, are you sure you don't want to come with us? It would be a lot of fun. But ultimately, it's about doing the things that you want to do. You set the goal. You checked it off. You were able to, yes. to share that moment with your wife and with your kids. Mm-hmm. And we can't guarantee that they're going to hold that moment close in their heart in the future. But I'm willing to bet that they will. Maybe at some point. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe they'll think, oh, that was pretty cool that my dad yeah. did that. But anyways. Yeah. And you were able to share that moment with them. You put the effort into the goal that you planned to and you made it happen. Um, and that, that's really what it's all about. It was cool. It was a bucket list item for me. I I got to check it off my list, even (laughs) if the people I brought didn't maybe appear to enjoy it Mm. as much as I thought they would. But Carly Tizano, this has been so much fun. If you will share with our listeners one more time, the name of your podcast, the name of your website, if people are, they're saying, boy, you know what? There's so much life ahead of me and I want to make sure I'm moving in the right direction. And they like the approach that you have. How can they learn more about the work that you're doing? Yeah, it's the Resolve podcast available wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. And then my website is carlytizano.com, C-A-R-L-Y-T-I-Z-Z-A-N-O. And I'm on all social media at Carly Tizano as well. Awesome. Carly, thanks so much for being a guest on Sound Retirement Radio. Thank you so much for having me. Information and opinions expressed here are believed to be accurate and complete for general information only and should not be construed as specific tax, legal, or financial advice for any individual and does not constitute a solicitation for any securities or insurance products. Please consult with your financial professional before taking action on anything discussed in this program. Parker Financial, its representatives, or its affiliates have no liability for investment decisions or other actions taken are made by you based on the information provided in this program. All insurance-related discussions are subject to the claims-paying ability of the company. Investing involves risk. Jason Parker is the president of Parker Financial, an independent fee-based wealth management firm located at 9057 Washington Avenue Northwest, Silverdale, Washington. For additional information, call 1-800-514-5046 or visit us online at soundretirementplanning.com.